It's hard to have a conversation with Arctic residents in which change does not come up. What are the connections between the Arctic and changing climate? How can we extract resources responsibly and carefully? How can we sustain the well-being of Arctic residents? The time for actionable Arctic science has never been greater than it is today. The Anthropocene is a time of increasing human influence on the planet, and we titled the report The Arctic in the Anthropocene because we wanted to draw attention to the human role in Arctic change and also the human implications of Arctic change. How is the Arctic responding to loss of snow, loss of ice, loss of permafrost, loss, loss of habitat for different species? What are the implications of that and what can we do to address those questions now? The charge to our report was to look at the questions that are emerging. There are lots of important questions that we've been asking in the Arctic for a while, but there are other questions that we just haven't asked yet because we haven't been able to. The Arctic is evolving in many ways. The most dramatic and probably the most commonly known are the changes in sea ice and snow. The Arctic is also changing in other ways. The indigenous people are exerting uh, greater self-determination or seeking greater political autonomy. Something like 10% of the world's fish catch comes from Arctic and subarctic seas. 13% of the world's undiscovered oil is estimated to be in the Arctic. How can we provide for a future in which the things that we value in the Arctic are still there and are still healthy? We know a lot about the Arctic. In many cases, we need to know more. So there are many things that we're learning about because access has improved, because the ice has retreated, and so we can reach areas that we couldn't before or carry out operations in areas that we couldn't before. Many archaeological sites are exposed or being exposed either through coastal erosion or through melting of permafrost. If we don't look at them now, they may either wash away or decompose before we have a chance to understand what they're about. The Arctic is connected with the rest of the world through the atmosphere, through the ocean, through species migration, through interconnectivity, teleconnections, through shipping. So there's many connections between the Arctic and the rest of the world. What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. And what happens in the rest of the world, conversely, does not stay in the rest of the world, but also comes to the Arctic. If we look at, say, environmental contaminants, they're largely produced and released in lower latitudes. You'd think the Arctic might be clean of these substances or pristine. In fact, in many cases, levels of these contaminants are higher in Arctic animals and people than they are elsewhere in the world. One of our key questions is how can we prepare better to manage the Arctic? With all the changes that we're seeing there, what do we need to have in place in order to provide for better management of these changes? One of the things is we need to enhance cooperation. And this is across disciplines, across sectors, and cooperating internationally. Another thing we need to do is to improve our ability to manage and share information. We're generating a tremendous amount of data from the Arctic. Figuring out how to make those data accessible and available is really important. We also need to be concerned about human capacity in the Arctic. Some of this is scientific capacity in training young scientists and getting them excited about the Arctic as a, a place to do research. And a lot of it also has to do with working with Arctic communities. Arctic communities have a lot to gain from Arctic research and they certainly have a lot to add. Typically, people incorporate the, the policy side or the action side of the research question at the very end. After they've done all the research, they say, oh, well, how can this connect with something else? And what we need to do instead is to incorporate decision makers and stakeholders at every step of the research. In five or 10 years, there may be something that we've forgotten or we realize that we should have been asking. And if we miss that opportunity now, we've really missed a, a big chance in a rapidly changing environment. Fostering a sense of shared purpose to manage change to the best of our abilities is essential. To do this, we need a continued commitment to studying what exists, what is emerging, and what awaits us in the Arctic.